Hello everyone and welcome to Share Your NIM Adventures with NIMI. I'm very happy to be part of the second edition of the NIM conference and to be able to share with you the work I've been doing the last few months on this NIMI library. I'm Pietro Peterlongo, dall'Italia, Milano, and I work as a Python data scientist in a company that does supply chain planning software. I ran into NIM in September 2018 through a Hacker News uh, with a blog post programming language underdog. Since then, I was hooked. First, I mm, lurked around, and then I decided that I wanted to try and participate for the first time in, a, in an open source community, and I've been very happy I've, I've done this. What is NIMIB? NIMIB is a, a template-based DSL for publishing NIMCON at its outputs, text, images, and possibly other stuff. It is sort of inspired by Jupyter, R Markdown, uh, notebook publishing. Uh, coming from Python data scientist, one of the things I liked at the beginning, first was a REPL, and then I was able to, to do without that. But uh, the fact to visualize stuff and to be able to document the process I've been doing is something that uh, I missed, and that's why I started uh, working on NIMIP. The target use cases are tutorials, blogs, uh, explanation, notebooks. Um, the development has been example-driven from the beginning. I started with a very simple example and an API that I wanted to implement, and I said, okay, let's do, let's see how we, how we can do that. Uh, one of the targets of the library is to have uh, good defaults that you can use it uh, out of the box without having to, to set up uh, a lot of stuff, but also to allow to customize pretty much anything. And uh, hopefully I will be able to show you this in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. NIMIP is a package, it's a normal package. So you install it with Nimble install NIMIP. It doesn't even install a binary. It's just a package that you import. And how do you use it? Let's say that uh, you're working on something, a piece of code. These are two lines of a simple code using uh, a library in Emoji, which was my first uh, package contribution to NIMU. And uh, let's say that you want to publish a document that shows you how to use uh, an Emoji with this two very simple lines. So what you will do is, taking these two lines, you will add an import NIMI at the beginning, then call an NB init, which initializes NIMI document. Then you can add some text explaining what the, the rest of the code does. And this text, uh, you can type it in Markdown. So you can add links, headers, uh, emphasis, and whatever. And then the code you had, you put it in a block uh, called MB code. This code will execute the code. This is just uh, executing as a script in the, in the global environment. And uh, the, the action that will do it will capture the output of the each of and any other output that uh, uh, text output that has been called in this block of code. Finally, uh, you call MB saved, and this will create, render, and create a uh, HTML document with the same name of the NIM file next to the published document. What does it look like, the results? So to, to, to see the results, you have to compile and run your file. It's a standard NIM file. And the results will look like this. So we see the markdown text with the link, the block code, and the captured output. Along with this, it comes with a home button which will be useful to provide standard navigations if you want to uh, put more than one document together, the name of the original file with the path re with respect to this home folder, a link to the GitHub repo in case this uh, NIM file was inside a GitHub repo uh, and it was uh, recognized, then uh, a link to NIMIB uh, as a sort of advertising for the library, uh, you can, uh, if you want, change and remove any part of this. And uh, also very nice, a show source button that will show the complete source that was needed to produce this document. 
This theming, which is the default theme, is styled with Water CSS, which is a minimal uh, styling uh, based on semantic uh, HTML, no classes. And the highlighting here is uh, mm, sort of provided by Highlight.js in a sense that it's statically done, but uh, the type of uh, uh, styling, the classes that are uh, used are compatible with Highlight.js styles. So you can pick another one uh, from the many styles that, that are there. That's the basic examples. Uh, so what do I have to do if I, have, uh, uh, if I want to show an image? Another example, this time using another library, Pixie, that uh, I guess will be presented either before or after this talk in this conference. I run some code importing pixies, doing some stuff. In this case, I'm just uh, showing a random palette of eight colors that I show here. And this is the command in pixie that writes it to a PNG. How does Nimib show this image? Well, let's look at the source. And after the image write file, I call another command nbimage with the, the uh, path of the image file. Uh, another of the features that is built in, uh, although it must be activated, is uh, uh, the LaTeX uh, um, visualization. Uh, this is another uh, article uh, I have written uh, to use Alia, uh, um, a library to, to work with probability distribution, following up on a question that somebody asked on the Nim Science chat. And at some point, you can see there appears some inline and uh, uh, rendered later. How does, uh, is this done uh, in, uh, in NIMI? Well, let's look at the source. In the source, the first thing is that uh, LaTeX, you have to activate it. This is currently provided by KTech, which is a JavaScript library. So since I expect that many documents will not need uh, LaTeX, uh, in order to make the HTML load the JavaScript, you have to tell them to uh, use LaTeX. And then inside the markdown, you just use dollars, single dollars for inline LaTeX and double dollars for rendered equations. Let's start with customizing. Uh, one easy thing that you can do is you can pick another styling instead of uh, water CSS. For example, in this case, I, I pick LaTeX CSS. And in this other article, uh, the, I show also uh, the, how to use, uh, again, uh, LaTeX. And uh, this is an article that you can see uh, is using numerical name by, by Hugo Granstrom. And uh, it's uh, in standard uh, LaTeX style. Uh, you also find uh, a classical uh, LaTeX table here. How do I do this? Well, the key point is to use a context that is associated with a document and change the key for style sheet and replace the default, which will be water CSS, with uh, an URL for uh, LaTeX CSS, which can be a an absolute URL, or, or you can download and put it somewhere in, uh, in your folder. Then, in this case, uh, I also have the option to produce the two documents uh, with the same uh, uh, name file, depending on uh, the compile option I pick, and I can switch between one or the other. Um, this uh, another example to uh, understand how customization works. Actually, let's say, how does customization work in general? It's based on Mustache, which is a template system, so-called logicless, which is available in multiple languages. In NIM, there are even two implementations. I ended up picking NIM Mustache by Sosme, who also provides the markdown engine for, uh, for NIMIB, because uh, it, has, uh, it handles uh, also templates as in memory partials. In particular, you do not need to have a template, a mustache file uh, somewhere in order to produce this document. It's already, uh, the, a default mustache file is already in the library. This uh, particular article on mustache reproduces exactly the manual page of the original mustache uh, uh, page, 
but it does it using Nimib and using Nim Mustache. So all the code here uh, is uh, um, working and uh, the output is created while I execute the, the Nim file. Uh, just as a brief introduction, how does um, Mustache work? You have hand, uh, these mustaches, the handlebars, two for something that will, you will substitute, escaping with respect to HTML, and uh, instead, if you do not want to escape, you have either three of these uh, braces or two braces and an end uh, symbol. So in this case, if I put as company something, something that contains HTML elements, the, uh, this one will be escaped and this other, these two will not be escaped. Another thing that one can do with Nimib to customize and actually extend the DSL is create other commands that, are, that do specific uh, stuff. In this case, I'm showing you uh, how I created a markdown cheat sheet, so which shows uh, all the markdown syntax uh, uh, supported by Nim markdown, but in turn by, by um, Nimib. And uh, in this case, I extend the DSL to provide a simple way to add a table of contents and also to create a, a custom text block that will not only render the markdown source, but also show the markdown source. In this uh, example, I also customize the code highlighting because there are some snippets of code in other languages. So I add highlight uh, JS library to highlight those other languages. So you see the table of contents here. Uh, I can go to a section in which uh, I can see that, for example, a piece of markdown code is shown and rendered. How this is done? Let's go in the source. So I have defined some functions in order to define a new template, uh, text with source, that calls the standard text template. This is one way of extending the DSL and then does something else to make sure that uh, I both show the, the rendered output and the, uh, the initial output. And then there are other templates to uh, add the table of context at the beginning and then uh, add the different sections every time I introduce the section. So I have my initial text. I add the table of context here and for every section, I call NB section. And this is a simple way to customize this. And in this document, I also show how to, cast, uh, to add uh, Highlight JS, uh, uh, both style and uh, library. Another thing that um, uh, I can do to customize when, when I decided to go for a, a full set of customization, I can call it a theme. And uh, this is something that uh, we have been working collaboratively with others in the community in the last month. Uh, and uh, it's called Nimibook, and it's a port of MDBook, which is a rather popular uh, Rust uh, uh, library, binary and library to create books. So it looks like exactly like MDBook, except that uh, some features are missing. You have the table of content. Here you can switch to a different theme, but uh, the, instead of providing it markdown files, which, which you can still do, you can provide NIM file compiled with NIMIB. Uh, in particular, how do you use it? Uh, you write content, uh, NIMIB content like this, you import a library, it's again another library, and after initialization of the notebook, you ask them to use NIMIBook. The other main features of this uh, library is the fact that I provide a uh, DSL to create a table of content in which uh, I import Nimibook and I create a new book from table of content with all the entries, the title of the entries and the files that can be a Nim file, a simple markdown file, and I can have a nested uh, section. So these are the basic examples that I wanted to show you uh, today. Uh, the first examples were taken directly from NIMI do documentation and uh, and blog. 
So NIMU documentation contains more examples. Uh, and then NBlog, which is a blog I started about NIM ecosystem built with NIMIP, is something that uh, uh, is not still official. They're all published as drafts because I, I need to provide uh, the library with uh, some uh, default theming for, uh, for blogging. Uh, the library started actually uh, with advent of NIM, which is uh, both the first thing I did with NIMIP, but also the first thing I did with NIM. And so you find other examples there, although this is Right now, it uses a slightly outdated version of Nimit, and I have to update it. Uh, but you can find other examples. For example, the Getting Started Signing Book, a community effort to show how to use NIM scientific libraries. Uh, the first public usage of Nimit, not by me, was by Ayusa, uh, and uh, has uh, more than one article on binary lang, and it was very interesting also to learn about this library. Uh, which was otherwise uh, a bit difficult to learn how, how it works. Uh, then uh, I want to mention also Nimibust. Hugo Granstrom is working on a VS Code extension to make sure that uh, when you have uh, markdown code in the string in NIMI fi NIM files, uh, you're able to see a highlight and also to preview results in a separate panel. And uh, uh, ZetaShift is working on uh, yet another team, so the first uh, new theme that I haven't uh, done anything about it. So uh, it seems that people are liking this. So go ahead, use it, keep them coming. Although I, I must say that there are many small details that need to be improved. I have been working this, uh, of course, in my spare time, which is uh, limited. I uh, plan to keep on working a lot. It's something that I liked doing. The main small uh, details, let's say small details that uh, need to be improved uh, right now are the fact that the code in, uh, in the block is not uh, rendered exactly how you write it in the source code, but it's rendered with uh, the two sterlet uh, macro from, from NIM. So it will uh, forget about normal con 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 comments. It will only preserve documentation comment and it will change somewhat the syntax. And it, sometimes it will also show a bug that uh, uh, is present in uh, Toasterlit. Uh, then work on Nimibook uh, made me very clear that I have to redesign completely how paths are handled, how the home directory is handled, and how the fact that uh, you should be able to have a, a source directory for, uh, for the content that is separate from the home directory. And uh, in, Nimi, in Nimibook, you already did that, but I have to port uh, this kind of changes uh, upstream in a, in a reasonable and general way. And another big ref, uh, refactoring, I mean, useful refactoring, especially to create themes, would be uh, to uh, make sure that NB init creates basically just one uh, global object uh, instead of uh, two NB doc and NB block, uh, a single one, and other for handling the pass, a single one, and that would be very helpful to, to create new themes. Then, other uh, direction of extension of, uh, uh, of doing stuff with Nimib is to create new themes. First, uh, I definitely want to work on uh, uh, improving the default functionalities for blogging, which is one of my main use cases. I learned about NIM through a blog, uh, and uh, it's something that I enjoy reading about. Uh, and uh, other exercises, I enjoyed a lot the exercise of uh, porting a NIMI book. It was very simple. In that case, uh, MD book used, uh, used as template system handlebars, which is very similar to, to Mastage. So uh, I want to try other uh, known themes in the status uh, site generators. One is minimal NIMP stakes, which I find the memory correctly is Jekyll. And so I want, for the moment, uh, these repos are just uh, named currently. Uh, I want to port it to NIM minimal mis mistakes, which I will call NIMINAL MIP stakes. Very difficult to pronounce. Uh, then another one, NPaperMib, will be a port of PaperMod. These are, again, empty repos, uh, and uh, let's see how, how we get to work on that. And these slides are made with Reveal.js, which also, I think, is a very good fit with Nimib, so I plan also on working with Nibil. Maybe by the time we actually see this, uh, this talk, uh, I might have done something in this direction. Third direction that one can work on, and I plan to work on, is on extending the DSL. I actually have a lingering PR about uh, to refactor how the rendering works. So every block of code, either text uh, or code block, uh, 
uh, keeps some information and uh, the rendering is also only, only done in the save blocks and uh, uh, right now it's very much uh, wired to a text block and a code block and it's not easy to customize decide uh, whether we want to escape the output uh, or not uh, and uh, this refactoring will be crucial to really be able to extend uh, the DSL in many ways. One of the ways that uh, I think is uh, uh, the most interesting one is to support workflows involving the JS backend. So you could have a, a, a block of code that actually is written to a file, compiled with the JS backend, and the JS file gets put inside the NIMIB document. And in this way, for example, you could uh, support something like uh, Carax documentation on which a user is working and I guess he was he mentioned some interest in into that. A third direction which is farther uh, away is not something in which I have planned any activity would be to get uh, to get more interactivity out of this not just static pages. Uh, something I would be interested in doing is to build apps like Streamlit which is a Python uh, library for targeting uh, applications in machine learning but actually you can build a lot of very nice stuff uh, very easily with uh, with the api i think streaming was an influence i ran into it while while thinking about NIMIB. or in principle you could actually build uh, a full ide like uh, jupiter let's say an interactive uh, argument uh, if uh, then uh, somebody wants to add also hot code reloading uh, if it works in some way it could be very nice uh, but this is not really the direction that I'm particularly uh, uh, keen on right now. And uh, first, we have I have priority this the three the first three lines. Uh, so uh, this has been my first time working in uh, open source and NIM community is the, really the first community I, I work with Python, but I I follow the community. I don't really participate. So it's been uh, uh, very nice to participate with all the new community. In particular, for NIMIB, I have to thank a lot Sosme, who created NIM Markdown and NIM Mustache that were there to grab and to use in this project. And they work great and it's also improving. And you can sponsor him. I actually am uh, sponsoring him because he recently started a sponsoring uh, program. Uh, Klonk, who has been working also on NIMIBook, provided one of the crucial uh, initial steps uh, at the beginning uh, for the function that uh, actually captures the, the standard out uh, uh, output of a block code. Yardanico was a great sponsor and he actually was the one who um, made sure that highlighting uh, did not use, for NIM code that does not use uh, JS, but uh, is done statically when you render the document, because why not? I mean, it looks much better. And uh, I already briefly mentioned Hugo, Datashift, uh, and a user who are doing and using the library. And thank also for uh, everyone who has put the star on the repo because it keeps the motivation going uh, on, uh, on working more on this. And thank you all for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference.